So maybe you're thinking about getting a Brazilian rainbow boa, or maybe you have one, and maybe yours is a little nippy, right? And so I just wanna kinda of give you guys some tips and some pointers as to how I tamed my particular Brazilian rainbow boa. So if you're interested, tap in. I would say whenever you're handling any of your snakes, uh, always wash your hands. I always use hand sanitizer and that just makes sure, you know, if my hands don't smell weird or funny, if your snake feels stressed, you know, a lot of things can happen. It may not want to eat, you know, it may, uh, you know, it may be defensive. It may try to strike at you. There's a lot of things that can happen. But um, so, yeah. So the first thing is just pretty much to make sure that they feel comfortable, right? So within that, you want to wait two weeks. You want them to eat for you twice before you start handling them. Uh, that's just kind of the rule of thumb. You know, I would say the earliest, at least wait at least a week. Um, that's what I typically have done in the past before. With her, because she was such a little baby, I, I actually waited two weeks um, just to be safe. So anyway, so uh, you know, I waited the two weeks with her and um, yeah. So after that, then I was handling her pretty much every day. So as long as, you know, she hadn't just recently, you know, eaten, or as long as she wasn't in shed, I was pretty much handling her. And that was because like right away, as quickly as I could, I wanted her to be used to being handled. Otherwise what can happen is, you know, they just don't get used to it. And, you know, um, they're gonna strike at any and everything just because, you know, they're afraid. And that goes for pretty much like any snake. Granted, they're also individuals, some snakes you're gonna have, they're just gonna be super docile no matter what. She's kind of like that. I've never had any issues with her, but I, I do feel like if I handled her incorrectly in time, at times in the past, I definitely could have gotten tagged. Um, and that's not because like she's like mean or she wants to hurt me. It's just cause like I could have scared her and it's a certain thing you wanna do. So one technique that I always do whenever I'm trying to handle them, I never put a, my hand above them and I never put my hand in front of their face. So what I'll do is, I'll kind of show you here, I'll just do this. If I want to switch them to another hand, I'll gently put my hand underneath them, right? So I'm never I'm never putting my hand on top of them, you know, because that, that can scare them. Like they can think that, you know, that's a predator or someone's trying to hurt them or kill them or eat them. So, you know, that's a technique that I do whenever I'm trying to transition them from one hand to another hand or, you know, or something like that, but always underneath them. So you're kind of out of their purview, right? And so uh, before they know it, you know, then they're on your hand, you know what I'm saying? And so my point is, is that you're kind of taking away, you're kind of taking away the point of them being afraid, right? And so before they know it, like your hand is underneath them and the transaction has already occurred. There's not like, oh my God, this big thing is trying to like do something weird to me. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, just being gentle and um, kind of smooth, like, you know, just one motion, you know, um, not too abrupt and you should be really fine. But um, yeah, these particular, these particular, oh wow, nice little grip. <laughs> these guys are uh, really shy. They're more shy than anything, honestly. It's my experience with them. I've handled a lot of babies. Oh, not, in fact, when I was searching for, you know, uh, the next, or when I was searching for Brazilian rainbow boa to add to my collection, you know, I handled many babies. And all the babies I handled, they're all the same. They're all like shy. They remind me very much like ball pythons, kind of, in that regard. But uh, I feel like, unlike baby ball pythons like they're they're just a little more curious um versus like kind of staying in that ball like they come out they come in that ball a little quicker than say your, your traditional ball python so i'm not equating you know brazilian rainbow boas to ball pythons because they're not like them but they are a little shy and that is kind of reminiscent of a standard typical ball python so honestly the name of the game like once you get them out of the enclosure they should be pretty chill um and you know just be the warm tree that's what i typically would always do you know just like this i kind of let them just like crawl around me you know what i'm saying i'm not stretching her out i'm not bending her i'm not you know contorting her body in weird ways you know i'm letting her do her own thing however i'm in control i'm not gonna let her fall so if i feel her slipping you know i'll like I said before, I'll put a hand underneath her, not on top of her or, you know, dangling your hand in front of her face, that kind of thing, you can you can honestly get bit. Um, and that would totally be your fault, you know, for putting your hand in front of, you know, your snake's face in that type of a way. Um, 
but yeah so once you kind of just like understand your snake and understand their movements and emotions and just like kind of how they think or just how they operate it's cake it's super easy um nothing to be afraid of at all you know what i'm saying as you can see here kiki is i'm not kiki <laughs> sorry as you can see here skittles is just cruising and she's chilling so like one thing you may notice with your Brazilian rainbow boa when you have yours, uh, you may notice them like when you're holding them, they could try to burrow. They're not trying to bite you. It may look like that. Like their face will kind of be like, you know, like bumping into your hand or something like that. They're not sizing you up. They're not trying to eat you. Uh, that's literally like they're trying to burrow. Uh, and that's just kind of what they naturally do. Um, you know, like she loves to burrow. She burrows in her substrate. You know, so that's another thing too with your, um, your I would say with your husbandry is make sure you have enough substrate for them to burrow and you, you want that at least to be about, you see how thick it is up there on that? So you, I do like at least about like two, three inches like high up of substrate just so that they have enough to burrow in because um, they love to do that. So honestly, when you make your snakes happy, they're going to be chill. They're going to be like relaxed. They're not going to be all stressed out. That's just the nature of the game. That does it fam. I hope this video kind of helps you if you're thinking about getting a Brazilian rainbow boa and you're thinking like, man, is it gonna be like, you know, uh, like nippy? They're really not nippy. Um, I mean like, yeah, you could, I mean like honestly, she could be nippy if I was handling her incorrectly. I feel like honestly, for sure. If I was like a novice, you know, and I never handled snakes before, it's a good chance I probably could have been nipped a couple times for sure. But honestly, like, <laughs> It's one of those things it's like it's really not that hard you know and uh it just once you get a little experience in it it makes it a lot easier and once again you could have a snake that's just so chill and never even tries to strike at you and that happens like you know um but yeah i just say like there's nothing to be afraid of you know these are great animals especially if they're captive bred so there's a difference between wild caught captive bred and uh even farm bred so you know, just make sure if you're getting a snake, especially one of these type of snakes, uh, boa. Oh my gosh, if you're getting a boa, you make sure you get a captive bred. I wouldn't recommend ever getting a wild caught. You know, they have a lot of issues and the life expectancy of those is really isn't that high just because of like the whole transportation of them and just the care, you know, it's pretty bad on them. Um, so I just wouldn't really recommend getting a wild caught. So if you can, you know, try to really focus on a uh, captive bred. Um, and that goes for all my all my snakes are captive bred you know i don't really ever really want to introduce a wild caught species into my collection that can create all kinds of of havoc um for sure but anyway so that does it fam once again uh thanks for watching uh if you haven't already make sure you subscribe uh you know get more cool content get to see all my babies grow like i said she's still a baby so there's so much more growing to do and to kind of see how she and you know uh, turns out you know i have other boas too it's gonna be really interesting to see how big they get thanks again for watching um and that does it and until next time i'll see you guys later uh black hippie out much love peace